guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Once again, my name is Kings Polonina and I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in economics at Eastern Illinois University, specifically in Charleston, Illinois, United States of America. And as I promised you, that I'll be bringing you away videos on how to assess education abroad for free. With this episode, I'm going to share with you how I was able to obtain three scholarships on my first attempt. Yes, you heard right. So I will plead that you like, comment, and please subscribe and hit the notification button so that you'll be, you'll be the first person to receive notification when I upload any video. So, ta-da! Let's proceed! Alright guys, so now in regards to my story, um, I will start from when I began, I mean, searching for information on how to apply for schools abroad. So, as I am also helping you, I did search on YouTube and staffs, but more importantly, I went for conferences and seminars on how to apply for schools abroad. So, with regards to the process, I mean, to be very um, sincere with you, I began from searching for schools or searching for scholarships. So, I did apply to schools in UK, that is where I began, UK. Um, University of Leeds, University of I mean, Sheffield, um, Liverpool University, just mentioned them and Alan and Esther Ferguson scholarship, go to Belgium, I worked on uh, Mastermind scholarship, um, go to uh, University of Antwerp, go to um, Canada, University of Lethbridge, Saskatchewan, and also University of Windsor. So I really combed around Germany, dad and stuff. But I mean, I discovered that if you kind of want funding, US was kind of, I mean, a priority to consider. So I took time and honestly combed through the entire 48 contiguous states in US as me from Alaska to Wyoming so I did search and I mean I was searching for schools that were offering masters in economics and more specifically offering scholarship for international students so I did I mean scouted my schools listed them and uh, I then proceeded to check the admission checklist and the admission checklist was uh, pre I mean primarily uh, your transcript degree certificate passport um, CV recommendation letters statement of purpose and some schools also require writing sample and i'll be making videos on how to work on i mean some of these documents so that is these are the basic documents i mean they required so uh, one thing is that i mean with regards to the recommendation letter u.s schools normally i'll let me just write it for you u.s schools uh, is u.s and canadian schools yeah they normally prefer that on majority of the schools here yeah, to a large extent will let you provide the professor's email and they themselves will email the professor to, to send a recommendation on behalf unlike i mean european and other um, schools where you can just go for the recommendation and upload on behalf of your lecturer so that is how it worked so for that reason i mean um it was part of my reasons for staying on campus to work as a teaching assistant although i mean i had the, i mean i have the passion to stay in academia so i worked as a TA to have easy access to these lectures and work on my recommendations now i had this document intact had my schools and the next thing I will tell you that was a key focus to my application process is that I was able to communicate or, I mean, establish some form of cordial relationship with the graduate coordinators of each school I applied to. Yes, I did that. So unlike Ghana or Nigeria or any other country you are watching me from, where you just buy forms and you just apply to the universities, here you need to kind of reach out to the coordinators. And trust me, not all of them will reply you are likely to give get negative feedback and stuff but the way and manner in which you go about writing the email is important so i'll be sharing with you how to get i mean i mean enormous or i mean uh, more positive feedback from the coordinators some schools will let you know that um, don't contact any professor because it's not a research-based program or don't they don't do pre-screening and stuff that is right but what i'm trying to say is that kind of ask him let me tell you this. One school I wanted to apply to, University of um, New Mexico State University. Yeah, New Mexico State University. So I emailed the coordinator. And, you know, due to the COVID-19, some schools, although on their site, they, they will say they have funding, they have this. I mean, but I always ensure, I want to confirm that what I've read is right. So I emailed the coordinator that I'm a prospective international applicant and I intend to apply. So I kind of want to confirm if they have funding available for international students. I mean, and what are the cons I mean, the things they take into consideration. So I emailed him and shockingly, he just replied to me that, I mean, they have funding and everything, but due to the COVID-19, they are not going to give funding for international students in the subsequent year. But I mean, I don't know why they've not updated their site though. So that was, I mean, a specific or a unique scenario. So I always try to reach out to them, ask them, I mean, 
questions although sometimes you might get them in their f i mean frequently asked questions though but i try to go beyond introduce my i mean introduce myself or write a formal email so i will take you through how all these things work. so i did that so with my school that i worked on i have the scholarship i received from western michigan university ohio university and eastern illinois university and some i also had an offer from i mean western illinois but that one um, i mean uh, it's, it's also okay though yeah so with the three schools or all the schools i worked on in us and some two in canada and other schools but us more specifically as that is where i am at the moment i established that relationship so they knew me they knew me i took time i took time to go through their profile read about the program content and drafted a very solid email i mean solid email and trust me i always get a positive feedback sometimes to negative though or no reply but that is fine so now let's proceed so um with regards to one school, I met a coordinator and asked him about um, the things they took into consideration as I told you. And he told me that they have average GP for admission. And in the US, normally it's range from 2.75 and 3.0 above. Some schools consider 2.75, others to 3.0 and above. So I did that. I talked to him and he gave me the average GPA for funding. And honestly, I my GPA was below that. But since I had, I mean, introduced myself well and expressed my keen interest in the program, I made him to be aware that boss, I mean, um, Dr. XSS, my GPA or my staff do not meet this, I mean, um, this funding opportunity. So thank you for the opportunity, blah, blah. But because I had been able to, I mean, kind of distinguish myself. The thing is, as you are emailing the professor, other students are also emailing him or her. So what is that specific thing that will set you apart? So that is, these are the gaps my channel seeks to fit, I mean, fill. So I'll be giving you, I mean, the, the, the insights on how to fill this lacuna, the gaps. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so that is how, I mean, it worked. So um, he agreed and promised me that when I finish submitting application, I should let him know. I did that and, I mean, God be so good. At the end of the day, I had my first funding in February, I mean, followed by the other school. And I mean, the other schools, I mean, also followed. So, in all my application, the special thing that I did was establishing this cordial relationship. As I said, some coordinators will give you general response, but that does not mean you should, you should stop. So, as we proceed in this channel, I'll be sharing with you how to go about this process and also the document I shared with you. I mean, the CV, how to craft or draft an effective CV. And also, um, um, the thing is that it is not about your GPA. It is not about, I mean, it is not always about your GPA. Let me put it that way. So I'll be sharing with you insights on how to go about the entire process. But that was my story. This is how it worked for me. I come through UK, Belgium, Germany. Uh, just mention them. No way. I come through every place. So I kind of discovered that, I mean, for funding's sake, these are some places that I, I should work on. And one mistake two people make is that, when they discover that people, um, let me just give you a bonus here. Yeah. When they discover that they have a senior in this school, oh, senior, I want to apply to your school. Then, um, you know, as you know me, other people also know me. So it kind of um, um, increases uh, the pool of applicants. And although you can make a distinctive, I mean, application, but all that I'm trying to, the point I'm driving, driving towards is that we have a lot of schools in the US. So kindly take your time. I'll be taking you through, I mean, the nitty gritty on how to discover schools discover your school yourself i had a senior in i think one school in ohio and i had others two others two in other schools but i discovered my own school communicate to the coordinators made them to be aware that this is a specific i mean so yeah so my professor knew me and i mean we have this we had this relationship before coming so they were i mean ready to receive me um, i have so stories to i mean a lot of stories to share with you but i want to end with i mean the scholarship package how it works in the us so with regards to the scholarship i mean um system in the us it kind of differ from the other i mean countries you know the european countries and some i mean schools in canada but primarily or uh, primarily yeah the scholarship in scholarship in us comes in the form of what we call graduate assistantship although they have some merit scholarships and also international commitment scholarship and um, other kind of scholarships okay but the i mean the one that is i mean um, on top of everything is what we call graduate assistantship which comes in the form of what graduation assistantship whereby you'll be assigned to assist a lecturer um with his or i mean her uh, course that he or she i mean teaches yeah 
And then the other one is graduate research assistantship, research assistantship. And um, others to serve as a graduate assistant. So that is how it works. So currently, I'm working as a graduate teaching assistant where I've been assigned to a lecturer um, to handle some um, undergrad courses and also um, host doubt clearing session for the students. And this, with, with regards to this one, um, the difference is that we work in exchange for tuition remission and a monthly stipend, unlike other places whereby you, they just give you the money, pay your school fees, just eat, sleep, and study. Yeah. But here, although we work, we are gaining some experience. So that is how it works. So, and I mean, I'll be sharing with you, I mean, how feasible this, how feasible or um, what is the word? <laughs> so if it is infeasible or what have you, I mean, yeah. If whether it is feasible or not for, I mean, that stipend that you receive to keep you going. And I mean, we will take you from there. So stay tuned. I mean, that is what I have for you. And as always said, a scholarship is not lottery. It is not lottery. Scholarship is not lottery. So you need to be given the strategy and the path to follow. And that is what I'm here to offer you. And kindly subscribe.